Welcome. Welcome, all of you. I welcome you. If not me, then who? If not you, then who else? This is a welcoming place. Is it a safe place? That remains to be seen. How many places are truly safe on Earth? Let's not even get into safe space places. Okay, let's break it down. You got your mom and dad's house. But there's scary rooms in there. Do you know what's an underrated scary room in your mom and dad's house? The laundry room. I don't like the lighting in there. I don't like how the machines seem to move. Like you put the laundry in. Your mother would love if you did it because you wanted to do it rather than her having to ask you to do it. But get real, mom. I'm a kid and I want to play. Put some laundry in there. It makes a horrible noise. And you go back and it's moved away from the wall. What? Is that washing the machine? Is it slowly trying to get you? Because you think, well, surely the closed door will thwart this machine. But if this machine can move and it has a thirst for your blood on its mind, who knows what it's capable of? Maybe it's moving that slowly just to make it worse. Biding its time. Imagine you're a, let's say, 10-year-old kid. You're asleep in your bed, covers over your head because you're a coward. You hear a noise, door creaking. Then silence. But you sense a presence in the room. You throw back the covers. Washing machine! At the foot of your bed. (laughs) What happens after that? I will leave to your imaginations, dear listener. We forgot to do a spooky show in uh, Halloween time. So um, I hope you don't mind. We're playing some catch up here. And uh, if you started listening to this already, I'm only going to ask you to forget what you heard and listen to this on October 31st, 2016. All right. I'm trusting that we're all on the same page here. I believe in you, and I believe in myself. All right. On to new business. Welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest on to have a freeform chat inspired by a blind question submitted by our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals to join me in the studio and we create a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to (laughs) everyone is having silent, enthusiastic reactions. (laughs) <laughs> one continuous story as opposed to unrelated scenes. And it is all scored on piano. Piano! By Mr. Eben Schletter. That's him. <laughs> and now, folks, it's time to introduce my special guest. This young person. Pretty exciting. She plays Shelly on Blunt Talk on the Stars Network. It's fun. Stars with a Z. Yeah. It's fun, right? Yeah, it's really fun. She's also Un Cop of the Wild Horses yes. Improv Collective. Yep. Her name goes Mary Holland. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. <laughs> hey, sometimes that's how it goes. <laughs> hey, sometimes, you know, that's just how it goes. If your name is Mary Holland, <laughs> that's how it goes for you. Exactly. That's exactly how it goes for me. <laughs> Mary, your, your name Holland. Yes. Do you have any sort of Dutch connections? No. Why did I get so scared that Dutch is not the right term to use? 
I, I don't it know. It is, isn't it? it? I think that is People the right from Holland term. are Dutch people. Yes, they are Dutch. They are the Dutch. Everyone confirms? Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my into gosh. It. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are just into that idea. Um, yes. But no Dutch people. But no Dutch people, as far as I know. My mother did spend a semester abroad in Amsterdam when she mm. was in college. Right. Get, get <laughs> I don't know that she ever did. We did we did try to get her high recently because she was like, I just can't relax. And we were like, Mom, you should try. Try weed. And we my sister said that she gave her and my dad a little bit of an edible. Sure. And um that my mom was like, I don't feel it and never felt it. But it was probably way too small a, a why a, the thing know. with edibles, right? Yes. Is that there's no good amount. Yeah. It's either not enough or, or it's way too way much. Way too much, yes. exactly. Yeah. Oh, they just eat a corner of this. Just a tiny little just corner of it. Just a tiny little corner. And then quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I have a question for you submitted by our previous episode's guest. Okay. And that question is, <laughs> this may or may not apply to you. Okay. Was your parents' divorce your fault? Mm, it does not apply to me. My <laughs> parents are not divorced. How long have they been married? They've been married for... Uh, <laughs> You're panicking. Uh, <laughs> I think close to 40. Wow. Pro probably 37, 38. That's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And so would, have they known each other? Were they like childhood sweethearts? Were they? No, they met in medical school. Oh. Very romantic. I'm glad I'm wearing a tie. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, my dad was two years older than my mom in school, and she was starting her first year of medical school, and he lent her his books or sold her his books his old books his he old didn't books anymore. yes and now yes. are they both doctors they are both doctors wow and, yeah in the same specialty or yes they're both radiologists oh so, my gosh please don't <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm just kidding <laughs> So, look, this provokes strong reactions, people. Some of our improvisers who are not here yet, obviously, are very yes, concerned with, with traces of radiation. <laughs> and so they, someone might be afraid that yes. you are actually going to cause them cancer. Well, no, and they can relax because they really what my parents don't administer the x-rays, but they read them. So they, although they, they, so. Uh, uh, they could administer x-rays. They, they know how to do it. Yes. But usually a um, tech person does that. A servant. A peon. Like a medical butler. <laughs> yeah. They have to do that. <laughs> um, yeah. So they, they read the x-rays. Have your parents ever seen x-rays of you? Have they seen x-rays of your bones? Yes. Yes. And they, I, do they have any in the house? I don't know. I, you know, they might have, actually. I think they saved some from my, my brother and my sister both had some bone injuries. I never had any bone injuries. Bone injuries. <laughs> <laughs> like they broke a bone. Yeah, I guess okay. that's, that's they, the way. Cause they <laughs> weren't injured with a bone. <laughs> no. <laughs> they were not hit with a bone, like, but they did <laughs> injure one of their bones in their body. You've never broken a bone. <sighs> Nor have I. Ooh, what oh. a special club. I know. Because <laughs> it does seem like most people you know have broken a yes, bone, right? Yes, yes. And in fact, now, like, when you're a kid, kids are breaking bones left and right. They won't and, stop doing around it. Around you. Yes. And you're like, oh, God, I'm glad I did. I don't have to go through that. And now I'm I'm older and I'm like, oh, no. Now it's I'm so scared of breaking a bone because I don't know what that's going to feel like. It's terrifying. It's really scary. Do you know what I think about a lot? Is we, <laughs> My wife and I had this before the house we're living in now. We were uh, renting this place that had just been, I think it like had been flipped, right? Mm -hmm. So it had this tub that I think was supposed to be a fancy tub, but the 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 lip of it, I guess the the t the wall of it was so wide that we had it was such a huge oh, effort yeah. to climb in and out of the tub. Yeah, and all I thought about was how I'm gonna break my fucking hip. Yeah, I'm gonna be like a young man <laughs> breaking my. I'm too young to break a hip. You can't break a hip, and if you do. And at this age, then you have to lie about it and you have to say, you didn't break a hip, you broke 
your leg. <laughs> or I was hit by a car. Or you were hit. Yes, that's, yeah, you're I right. That's certainly right. didn't slip in the shower. No, of course not. But have you come close to injuring yourself in that way? Have you had, did yes. you have any injuries when you were a kid? Yes. Well, I was very sick as a kid. I, I had really severe asthma. So I had to be hooked up to a machine every night before, really? before I went to sleep, not what, while I was sleeping. What was this machine called? I don't know. <laughs> Some kind of, you know, breathe, breathe a later or something. But uh, eventually I was able to move on to inhalers, but I think I was too young to like do the inhaler thing. Wow. So I think they put that medicine into this machine and I yeah. would just breathe it in um, through a mask. But yeah, so I was really sick as a kid and then I eventually outgrew it. But um, I, I have had a lot of skin injuries so not bone injuries, but skin injuries. Like cuts and bruises and things cuts like that? Cuts and bruises. I've had to get a lot of stitches. Really? Um, mm-hmm. I've never had to get stitches. Ooh, dang. <laughs> I wish I was in that club. You're like pristine. I, look, I still have my wisdom teeth. I have my wow. tonsils. I have my appendix. I'm going out the way I came Untouched. in. Untouched. That's right. That's great. Jeez. Um, yeah, I I have had several injuries it, both, I, I've had stitches a couple times. I had to get like a mole removed on my neck when I was eight or something. But when also, you were eight? yeah, because they were like, this is cancerous. And what? Like, when you were eight years old? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, my I was in God. third grade. And they kept telling me, this is plastic surgery. And I was like, this isn't what I thought plastic surgery was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and then the other two injuries, I, I have a scar here on my eyebrow. I'm pointing to my uh, left brow bone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a scar there, and then I have a big old scar on my knee. And both of those are from falling down because someone pushed me <laughs> <laughs> and landing on something very sharp. Oh. Yeah. So. Two, two different people? Two different people. The brow bone one was my brother. Sure. I was four years old, mm-hmm. and he was eight. And four? He was, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't like this story. I got tossed around a lot, you know, uh, but I could take it. Um, <laughs> we were playing tag. I was, I'm the youngest of three, and my brother's the oldest, um, and my sister is in the middle. And <laughs> we were, Process of elimination. <laughs> we were playing tag, and we were running through my parents' bedroom, and they have very low windowsills. Like, their windows were tall, and the windowsill was like, if you fell— and I was low to the ground because I was you know, teeny tiny. Um, <laughs> if you fell, you know, you you could potentially hit something on the windowsill. And if but and if you were an adult, yeah. you could fall out of the window, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they never opened the window in my memory. It but, was just. But if you got pu- if you got pushed, yes, you that's get pushed true. through the window. Yes, but it wasn't tall. It like wasn't high off the ground. I, it, hold on, hold on. <laughs> It was on the first floor, so no big deal. <laughs> okay. the, the window went out onto a oh, porch. What? I just assumed that this was in this, like a second floor situation. Yeah, it was okay. a first floor All right. situation. I, I'm, I'm relieved. <laughs> um, yes, but I was running, I, and I do have a distinct memory of this. It was nighttime, and, I was, and my parents had this green, gorgeous green carpet. <laughs> um, just a gorgeous muted olive. Right. And I was, pattern, no pattern? No pattern. Okay. I was running, and my brother dove at me, arms outstretched, and just kind of knocked me down. It, it wasn't a full-on just standing shove, which right. is a little more malicious. It, it was like, a, I'm going to get her, and then um, who knows what happens after I, my feet leave the ground. <laughs> and so he, he hits me, and I go down, and my head, the— slams against the windowsill and it is like truly like you can tell how precarious that position is because it Ugh. like one quarter of an inch lower there goes the eye yeah <laughs> and a little bit higher would have gone into my temple so it was like <sighs> woof we 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 um we dodged a bullet <laughs> <laughs> But there was blood everywhere and I, I remember my mom bringing me to the bathroom to clean me up and I saw what was in me. Like I saw blood coming yeah. out of me for the first time. And I was, I was shocked. I was just staring at myself in the mirror and I had blood coming down my face. And I wasn't crying yet. Cause I didn't know it didn't really hurt. Why did she face you towards the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She wanted to clean me Why? up in the bathroom. I think she was 
very like my dad wasn't home. She was having to deal with three kids. Right. One of them is <laughs> like, you know, uh, severely injured. And she was really panicking and trying to clean me up. And her panic was then I was like, oh, something's wrong. And then I started crying. Um, and we had to go to the emergency room. And yeah. And then I got sewed up. But they didn't numb it. They couldn't numb it because there was no oh, time. Yeah. So I remember. I was just oh, screaming and screaming. And sure. Screaming. Yeah. Did was somebody having to hold your head in yes, place? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and I was no. I it was insane. Oh. And I felt like the guy was sewing me up, Dr. Airy. Thank you so much, Dr. Airy. <laughs> he Shout also sewed up my knee later on. Um but he he was like I thought he was trying to kill me. I thought that this was Sure. You know, these they're they're trying to kill me. You have a very limited understanding of the world. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it all turned out okay. <laughs> Did you say I mean, do you remember saying anything while that was happening? In addition to just screaming crying? I think I was just screaming and crying, but my sister and my brother, I distinctly remember, and I will always have a very um uh intense association with this book. They were trying to cheer me up by reading me Green Eggs and Ham. And, while um, this was happening, I, it was I. It was either while it was happening. I don't think they were allowed in the room, but or it was right after, and I was still like sobbing, or it was right before. But they were like reading it to me, and I was like not in the mood. <laughs> I was, but I, but I remember them doing that. I'll always remember that. And the and the knee was the other place where you got stitches. The knee was the other place. That was um, youth group. Everyone knows youth group. No. What is youth group? <laughs> that was, we, it, it, it's like in church. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. It's like in church, we would go on Wednesday nights and we'd do youth choir where we'd practice our songs and all that. Mm -hmm. And then after that, for about an hour and a half would be youth group where we would watch a movie and have snacks and cookies and um, sometimes they'd plan activities for us. Mm -hmm. And in the summer, when it was still light out later on in the evening, they would let us play outside. And there was one night when we were engaged in a game of tag. Again with tag. <laughs> Again with tag. And how old, I how old I are you now? I didn't even realize that they both were that. Uh, how old am I now? No, no. no. <laughs> in okay, this story. Well, in I story. am a beautiful 30. <laughs> and in the story, I think I was... 12. Okay. 11 or 12, I think. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was running, I was running. And once again, I think I remember, yes, someone did kind of do the same thing where they were trying to get me and knock me over and a rock went into my knee, like a big old rock. <laughs> um, and that was another experience where I like looked in and I was like, that's inside me that's my knee <laughs> because it must have been like a deep gouge yes. for you to need stitches yes it so was it's deep. like it it's you are seeing kind of inside yourself right yeah, you're seeing weird. layers of skin yeah layer, oh. yeah it was very weird um but this is adorable the guy who so again we had to make a, another late night trip to dr Aries' office <laughs> where he had to sew me up again and um this time they numbed it it was fine it was no big deal but I, uh, as I was leaving, the guy, the kid who pushed me down, um, was waiting in the lobby with his mom and a bag of gummy lifesavers because he felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he was crying. He felt so bad. <laughs> what was his name? Grayson. Grayson. I don't know. Did you tell him that this was not enough? Yeah, I said, wow, this really makes up for seeing the inside of my knee. Yeah. Why don't I shove some gummy lifesavers in the hole in my body? Yeah, and then I smacked them real hard. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. And anyway, we're friends. When you, <laughs> to this day, mm -hmm. lifelong pen pals, mm -hmm. do you still know him? Mm-hmm. Do you really? Yeah, I follow him on Instagram. <laughs> that's, that's pretty adorable. Yeah. Um, when, very quickly, when you got injured at home yes. in the game of tag, was there ever any worry that, uh, like, the, the police were going to be called or anything? Because when kids are little and they get injured at home, mm. a lot of times they get suspicious of the parents. Oh, no. But now, because your parents are doctors, and maybe they even knew Dr. Ari. Yes, they did, yes. Okay. We all knew. It was a really small town I grew up in. Right. So it was, it, everybody knew everybody. Galax. Galax. West that's Virginia. right. 
Virginia. Virginia. But close. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right near the border. I'm you're, very no, sorry. No, you're so close. I know I know it's I know it's different though and it's an important distinction. It is an important to distinction. Many people. And yes, and thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a rather inelegant way to wrap up. And I apologize to the citizens of Virginia and also the citizens of West Virginia. Take me home, country road. <laughs> we are going to take a break. During the break, we'll secure our location for our improv from Mary Holland. And when we return, you will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else when Spontanea Nation returns. Hi, Paul F. Tompkins here. I want to talk to you about CISO. Do you know what it is? Do you trust me to tell you, or are you going to be a jerk? CISO is a premium comedy streaming service. Uh, it's a premium service, and also, it's premium comedy. It is on demand, 24 7 streaming comedy anytime, anywhere. It is curated for the comedy connoisseur. I'm guessing that means you, if you're listening to this amazing podcast. It's got original series, quotable classics, next day late night, stand-up specials, and more for only $3.99 a month. I mean, come on! There's no ads. You know, like you get Hulu and then... There's that guy, like, the following presentation is brought to you by beep pop boop boop beep boop boop And then there's an ad later for beep pop boop 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 that you can't skip through. You got to watch it in real time like a savage. And then th- th- you don't have to do that with CISO. No ads, man. Countless hours of premium, high-def comedy. Never before seen new originals like Bajillion Dollar Properties, which I'm a cast member of. New comedy added every week. Try it now for free. You can start as a guest. No credit card needed. Now look at l- l- now looking now looking looking at me and looking at me. You have probably been hearing about CISO for a long time, and maybe you have yet to pull the trigger. I'm telling you, it's time to pull that trigger because they got great shows. You've heard about the UCB show. It's a weekly variety sketch show that uh, the um, the original UCB four. Uh, created Amy Poehler, Matt Walsh, Matt Roberts, Ian Roberts. Uh, I, I told you about Bajillion Dollar Properties uh, with uh, uh, created by good old Kulab Vilaysak with an amazing group of improvisers, some of whom you're going to hear on upcoming episodes of Spontaneous Nation. You know what? I'm going to say all of whom, but not all at the same time. It's, it's great. CISO is great. You can see stand-up specials on there. Uh, our pal Cameron Esposito has a stand-up special on CISO. I mean, come on, guys. You gotta, you gotta check it this out. <laughs> they got the entire Monty Python library, including most of the movies, remastered into high def for the first time. Kids in the Hall, the amazing, legendary Kids in the Hall, also entirely remastered into HD for the first time. Classic SNL from the 80s, first episode of The Office. Just the first one. Okay, I always forget about this. We get to this part of the copy. Classic SNL from the 80s, question mark? I don't understand why the question mark. First episode of The Office? Just, I mean, is the question, is it just the first? I don't know who's who's asking these questions, but I'm asking them now. Season one of the Cyanide and Happiness show. All this great stuff you may never have seen before. There's so much good British comedy. Hugh Laurie used to do sketch comedy with Stephen Fry. A bit of Fry and Laurie. That's on there. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. One of the greatest, just absurd, funny comedy. The Mighty Boosh. Are you a fan of that? You need to see Nathan Barley. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to check it out. Because I have a CISO subscription. CISO sub. That's me. Josh Gad. Did a weird show called Gigi. I've never heard of that. Gonna check it out. And of course, Steve Coogan, Alan Partridge. They got every single episode of Alan Partridge, one of the greatest comedy shows of all time. Guys, you gotta do this. $3.99 a month. It's great. Go to CISO.com. Start watching all the comedy you can stream for free. CISO.com. Stream for free today. No credit card needed. They will get you hooked. Then you'll be getting out that credit card before you even know it. I'm a bit of a credit card psychic. CISO.com. 
Oh, who says ads can't be entertaining? A lot of people. Welcome back to Spontanean Nation, people who never went anywhere. It's me. I'm still the same. So are you. Unless what you just heard has changed you. In which case, you're welcome. You must have needed it. All right. I got some magic marker on my palm. We're ready to start. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to introduce our pals from the world of Make Pretend. Sitting right next to me. It's very rare for you. You don't often sit right next to me. I don't. You move around more than most people, though. I made an effort to. What? <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, because I kept sitting in that corner chair a lot, and then I was like, I have to shake it up, you know? Everybody else has their little seats that they always sit in. I'm going to have to memorize people's seats and then invite them all on the same day and then Ooh. see what happens. Oh. I like all to be the crosses. puppet master. <laughs> Jean Philippique. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you, Jean? I'm great. I'm good. Go- <laughs> you sound <laughs> like you're trying to hide something. No, actually, <laughs> I'm fine. This is how I. <laughs> so what I feel like. Most of the time, I am trying to. I was like, today I'm actually happy. <laughs> oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> um, I went to Las Vegas last weekend because my husband Brian Finkelstein, the Great, ran a half marathon for the first time Wait, in his life. Does he officially have that title now? The Great. Yeah. Yeah. In our oh, home. Man, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> how did he do? Uh, he did great. I, I don't know about, I can't remember what his time was, but he did well for the times he had prepared for. And it was, cool. was it his first marathon? Yes. Wow. His first I, anything like that. Man, oh man. I can't imagine. Have you ever done that? No way. I get mad when I run. I can't <laughs> do it. It makes me <laughs> anxious and mad. Now, have you ever broken a bone? Just my nose. And you broke it twice, you said. Yeah, once at a child's birthday party. Also, I got pushed in a, like a, a game at dusk. It was kind of mm-hmm. dark out. And then I got pushed and my, I hit the ground nose first, I guess. Was it tag? It probably was tag. We I didn't mean, have that tag many. Tag is a dangerous game. It's wicked. Some say the most <laughs> dangerous game. <laughs> um, uh, and the second time? I was in high school and my magical choir was going to... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I already sound cool. So we were going to Europe, and we got in the hotel, I think, the first night in Munich, and I dove into the swimming pool, and just, it got shallow real fast. And <laughs> I just remember shallow. hearing it underwater. <laughs> and then stood up and was like, oh, and then just <laughs> had bruises oh my under God, my eyes. Blood <laughs> billowing out in the water. It looked like the end of it follows. <sighs> well, Jean, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you still have a nose in your goddamn face. Thank you. I'm going to look away from you now and look across the table at the, <laughs> this person. <laughs> Just here last week. Can't stay away. Glad to have you back this week. Thank you. It's Sarah Burns. Hello. Sarah, how have you been since a couple days ago? Oh, fantastic. I've been great. <laughs> ever, ever broken a bone? I've never broken a bone. I've um, sliced open my chin and had stitches. Mm-hmm. I've smashed my tooth so hard that I killed it. Ooh, what? Dead tooth. Wow. <laughs> it's dead disgusting. Tooth. I had a dead tooth. <laughs> but you didn't you didn't crack the tooth or break the tooth. I like you just knocked it. it out permanently. It didn't was knocked out. I slid. I mean you knocked it unconscious. <laughs> it just it never it never resu- was resuscitated. It had a DNR. Your tooth is in a coma. Um my tooth is no longer with us because I oh. have like when it it fell out and then grew back in, it grew in yellow. Oh, and I had baby. like my neighbor Todd was like, "You look like you have a piece of dead popcorn on your mouth," and it was like so gross. That's not what he sounds like, but um, I mean, but is that what he said? Dead popcorn? Yeah, he's like, well, he was very macabre. Yeah, well, he's also dumb. <laughs> That's dumb, Todd. <laughs> God damn you, work, Todd! Work I love on Todd. your work on your roasts. Come on, yeah, get it together, dead but popcorn. Uh, no, he, he's rad. But and you know what? He was he's right. Rad. He was calling out the obvious. I had a piece of <laughs> popcorn in my mouth, and then. Then they replaced it, and then they it, it snapped out because I had my tongue pierced. And then, like, <gasps> snapped <laughs> my tooth with my tongue piercing. And oh, and then, like, <gasps> it came out. I had no tooth. And I looked like, hi, I have no tooth. Which tooth? A front tooth? Uh, this one right next oh to my, my big front. Oh, my God. And I, call, I had a job, and I called in, and I was like, I can't come to work today. I have no tooth. And they're like, why are you missing work? And I was like, because I have no fucking tooth. Like, do you want me to represent your company, Michael's Arts and Crafts? With no teeth. <laughs> um, and then so they like drilled a hole in my gums and then yeah. like put a spike and then like crafted a tooth around and I eventually yeah. took my tongue piercing out because I'm not an asshole. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with tongue piercing. Have you, have you had to have any upkeep on that tooth 
I brush recently. It. You brush it, but it's yeah. not like eventually that will deteriorate or anything. That's good. It's there for good. This will probably outlast my body. <laughs> That's interesting to think about. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. You're leaving something behind. There's going to be a legacy. That's of, your legacy. A fake tooth of fashioned around a rod. My wife has the theory that all, almost all men have a scar right under their chin. A lot of kids, very co- it's very common. Yeah. I yeah, was yeah. like reaching for my goofy poster. And on this very high <laughs> filing cabinet, because mm-hmm. I love, he was like my first crush. Who was better than Goofy? Mm. Um, I loved Pluto as well. Very sexy Tigger, though. Tigger, and then like, but Goofy was my guy. Yeah, the and, vest, sure. Oh, yeah, and he's sense of humor, and he's skiing. He's very outdoorsy. Did he have a sense um, of humor, or was he just dumb? <laughs> Well, he was a silly guy. <laughs> he wasn't afraid to put himself out there. <laughs> but so you lose your poster behind your parents' very tall filing cabinet. What sure. you do? You can grab it. You slice open your chin. Yeah. So be it. It's tale as old as time. It's story as old as the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, I'm going to turn away from you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I'm this think about it. Okay. Turn to me. Turn to me. This, I've turned to you. <laughs> It feels right. This is Jen Lamal <laughs> is returning to the show. It is wonderful to have him back. Say hello to Gary Anthony Williams. Oh, let Gary Anthony Williams say hello to them. Hello, them. Right? Do you have any special <sighs> messages for the listeners? I do. I do. Uh, <laughs> if you work for Michael's Arts and Crafts, it seems like somebody there could craft you a tooth if you knocked it Ooh. out. <laughs> Why not? I, like and just, the, and yeah. stay upright. I've never, I've never broken a bone or gotten a scar. I stay upright. I did get bit. I got bit by a dog once, but you know sure. what? I deserved it. Did you? Were you taunting the dog? No, no, no. I was not. I was trying to break my dogs up, and I thought the best way to break up my dog and my cousin's dog was grab them by the face <laughs> while they were fighting. Sure. So, but that is actually, and here's a message for the listeners: mm. don't grab a fighting dog by the face, mm-hmm. which is the name of one of my books. <laughs> <laughs> You're very prolific. Mm-hmm. Oh, I write a lot. But no scars. You never needed stitches. Nothing. No. Even then, I didn't get stitches right. for that. No. Did they break the skin? These dogs? Yeah. Yeah. I still have a little scar there and a little scar there. But you my people it. don't believe in thread. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's too proud, right? Yeah, yeah we're it's too, too proud. proud for thread. Yeah. Pre- thread is proud. It's not. It's not plain like in the Bible. Well, now you've met all these guys. Guys, we're on to the next thing already. <laughs> you gotta mm. keep up. Mm. You gotta. We have secured our location for Mary Holland. We are about to begin our story, just so as you know. In our storytelling, we use sound effects to move us about in time. Let's say uh, some people are talking, and then we want to find out what's happening concurrent to that conversation. A meanwhile, if you will, you will hear this cut to sound effect. Now we're over that other place. Do you, do you see? But it's still the same time. <laughs> If someone's having a memory or we're finding out how something came to be, we want to go travel backwards in time, you will hear this flashback sound effect. Make sense? Then if we want to return to the present or travel to the mysterious future, you will hear this flash forward sound effect. All of this is obvious. All right. Now, here's our location provided by Mary Holland. That location is Land Rover. Mm. We take you now to Land Rover. Well, it looks like up ahead, my phone says we're supposed to get off the highway here, but I, it doesn't look like there's anything but a giant mountain in front of us. Well, I mean, why don't we just go over the mountain, <laughs> right? I mean, why did we buy this thing? I guess we, we bought this thing to, to expand our lives. So, yeah, let's go over this mountain. Listen, Marianne, I want you to take that GPS, and I want you to throw it out the window because we don't need it. Larry, the, you, you're right. You're right. right? Okay. Oh, God. Uh, he's... Now, if you're going to travel any time in this here new car of right. yours, you don't need the GPS. I'm going to give you a portable GPS. It can be ripped right out and tossed out anytime you want. Oh, now, do we pay extra to have it in there for Sir, the limited amount of time? Not only do you not pay extra, I'm going to pay you to take it. <laughs> oh, that is very generous. I'm not the smartest businessman in the world, but I am the most well-dressed. Well, you do look terrific. Thank you. That's right. Right. This it's, is supposed to go out the window. It's all happening yeah. as it was supposed to. I have to let go. It's fate. It's time to do as the well-dressed man commanded us to do and throw that GPS out that goddamn window. Well, here it goes. 
Sayonara! Hey, Mom, you want to play catch right by the side of the road? Sure, darling. If that's what you want to do, I want you to be happy. Hey, just be careful. Something's coming towards your head. What? Yeah. No! Well, I feel like we've done something good here. Hmm. I, d I don't feel that way, but that's interesting that you do. It's all right that we don't agree all the time, Larry. I think that's a part of our relationship. Uh, I can feel free and you can feel caged. I <laughs> Just like in our vows. Yeah. Now, let's take a run at that mountain. All righty. Here we go. Just going to drive straight at it. All right. It's getting closer. Oh, thank God this four-wheel driving really kicks in. Stop, I know. Stop. Oh, hold on a oh second. Hold gosh. on a second. Oh. Oh, oh, this woman. Larry, fall over. Dude, what, 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 hold on. What, what, what is it, ma'am? Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. You're gesturing so excitedly, your clothes are coming off. Because it's been a wild and crazy day. My husband and I were just running through the forest earlier today, and something really scary came up on behind us, and we just we just need help. We want to get out of here. Oh, we're both doctors. Can we help you? Yes. Yes. I think I think my husband's been, he's been saying some crazy things. And oh. Oh. Okay. Please, can we just get into your car? Okay, let me ask you this. Do you have an x-ray machine? Of course. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's go see him. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, cats aren't the only olives alive. See, Ooh, yeah. cats are not this olives, is, Larry. This is serious. Yeah. He cats. knows the difference between a cat and an olive. So it's two things. He thinks that cats are olives and also that olives are alive. This is not in any of the books I remember. We're going to really have to dig deep here. I forgot to give you those other books. Oh, you had other ones? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, not bad. If anyone could stick their hand up my skirt, I'll make a wonderful puppet. See, he's not even wearing a skirt. He seems like he's got crazy problems I in his brain. He had a bone um, injury recently. And he oh, he was struck by a bone? He was struck by a bone. Oh, my a God. Clavicle. I read about that. <laughs> I'm just going to step out into the sidewalk now, honey, and change the motor oil in my vehicle. Okay, sweetie, mac and cheese will be ready in 10. <laughs> okay, make sure those ribs are ready. Hey, mister! Okay. Yeah. Mister! Yeah. Twink! Hey, y'all! Uh. Hi, hi! I'm smart! <laughs> oh, my God. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been the same. Children are so violent. Yes, that kid was incarcerated and taken away. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we should run the machine. We'll have to x-ray his entire head. Understood. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Understood. Not yeah. just the forehead. Yeah, a lot of people, they cut corners, and they'll just x-ray the forehead. No, do a deep x-ray of my husband's Is this a and party? Oh. Is there a party happening over here? Oh. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, of sorts. Uh, sort of a medical party, I oh. suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on my property. I live in the woods here. Uh, I have a, a, a hut oh. no, about oh. a quarter mile back. Are you guys having a party out here? Saying you, some kind of machine? Brought what? a machine with you? I'm sorry, is this one of your neighbors? Do you know this person? I haven't. My husband and I are new in, in the area. We haven't come over and introduced ourselves. My husband is, you may have heard about him. He's the neighbor who got the terrible bone injury. He was attacked by a bone. I oh. was stillborn. Yes. Oh, my God. He was born alive. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Look, I um, I tell you, I, I don't keep up too much with the goings-on in this area because I'm a bit of a hermit. <laughs> You're the first people I've seen in, in weeks and weeks. So I, that's why I came out. I heard voices, and I was like, I got to talk to somebody. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Your mail is here. I'm here with your mail. All right, I'll just leave it on the step right away. Ma'am. Oh, God. Ah. Anyway. Can I say you seem... You seem pretty outgoing for a hermit. Yeah, yeah. I well, I I, I got to be in the mood. You know what I mean? I got to be in the mood to talk. If I'm not, then I'll hiss at you, <laughs> right. and I'll and I'll chase you off my property. But I'm in the mood to talk, so I I'm curious that. to. Yeah, do you? There are some days when I just can't even get out of bed in the morning, and the thought of drinking my morning coffee makes me just want to rip an arm off. You know. Mm. Darling, it's darn near eight fifteen. You should be up now. Get the fuck away from me! Well, same thing you said yesterday. <laughs> well, maybe we should run you through the machine as well. That sounds like it's potential depression, which I, we can see on a scan. Sure, yeah, I'd love I'll to go through the machine. 
I love to go through the machine too. If if you, everyone's taking a turn, you'd like to get X-rays. Do you, oh, do you yeah. feel like there's something wrong with you? Before my husband was, you know, hit with the bone, he came up with this brilliant idea that we should invest in an X-ray machine. I feel like it was expensive. So the more people that use it, the less stress. Yeah, I'll then feel you feel like you get your money's worth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to have the first fax machine on the block, and the neighbors were always over. <laughs> 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 well, let me get this great. I put a piece of paper in here, and then I can go somewhere else, and the same piece of paper come out of there. That's right, and I'm happy to just run it right through you. We're about to start dinner. Hold on, let me call my questionable wife. Baby! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She had one of her vocal cords removed and replaced with a leg bone. <laughs> Baby! Now, if I put a piece of paper in here, That's they right. said the piece of paper come out of there. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's a fax machine. It's uh, <laughs> all right, all right. You're using fancy words and fancy well, materials. It's a, it's a facsimile, and uh, so it sends not the actual piece of paper, but it sends a facsimile of that piece of paper mm -hmm. to another fax machine somewhere okay, else. Okay, 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 okay. We've been the had. Word facade. Uh. <laughs> we have been had. <laughs> So, uh, of course, the first person to have the machine gets it used a lot. <laughs> well, let's let's fire this cat up. This is a uh, Excalibur 2000. Beautiful model. Wow. You, you second, really treated second, yourselves. Wait a second. What? Did you say cat? Cat. Do you think the fax machine is a cat? Cat. Did I say fire this cat up? You yeah. did. You did, honey. You did. That's I, how it started uh, with my... I, I live cat. I'm sure that... <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure it's just a um, you know a slang word for for X-ray noodle. Ooh. And if we just uh -oh. quickly put, put your yeah noodle, Marianne, you said X-ray noodle. <laughs> pick pick pick. <laughs> did you did you? I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but were you hit with a bone recently, or did you have any s skin injuries? Or well, I'm just thinking back to yellow. <laughs> I have a coupon in here. Excuse me, I'll just. Um, you really have to hurry up, ma'am. The line sorry. is long. Hey, 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 yes? hey, lady, hey, Sorry? lady, doink! Uh, oh, whoa! Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. And this little girl said toink. I don't know if it was a D or a T. Well, that's just like in the in the in, in your husband's story. Yeah. Children are out to get us. Do you think there's a gang of kids? Absolutely. With bones running around. Oh. All right. Yeah. We, we're almost out of bones. Harry. Yeah, what are we going to do? We need to get more bones. Toink, we got her. Toink, we got her. <laughs> How are uh, we going to toink? We don't have any bones. Yeah, we can't toink without no bones. Let's uh, toink it through. Don't worry, my children. I'll provide you with plenty more bones. Hey, man, tell us. You're what? all my little darlings going around hitting people with bones. <laughs> we know who we are, hey, man. Where are we going to get these bones? Yeah, we, we, we don't got no bones. Hey, man. Was it true that one of those kids was incarcerated? Or maybe even killed in jail? Yeah, we don't want to go to jail. I can't go to prison. No, 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 relax, my darlings. None of you will go to prison. You'll all beat my eyes and ears around the, the woods, running around, hitting people with bones, and bringing back their treasures and trinkets to our lair. Oh, we are supposed to steal from them. Have you not been stealing from them? No, no. just hitting them. We yeah, I was going to ask. What we literally hit them, we say toink, and we, we run. run. Right oh. We run right out it of there. It was a two-part plan. All right. The idea was you hit them with the bones and then steal their treasures and trinkets and bring them when back When do we here. say toink, Herman? Do we ask them if they had treasures before we toink them? Should we toink them before we even show up? Well, no, you toink them, <laughs> and then they're out, and then you steal their treasures and trinkets. Shall we toink the trinkets? No, don't toink. This is toink. not difficult. Toink. Toink. Stop, stop, toink. stop saying toink. Listen, <laughs> I don't know why you children can't grasp this. What's the point of me having a little gang of kids? You toink them, and then you steal the treasures and trinkets and bring them back here. Well, I toinked a lady recently. She had a really big dog. I couldn't have toinked that dog and then taken the dog. Well, a dog's not a treasure nor a trinket. It's a yeah. dog. Can we take like an hour break to eat and then come back and discuss this? Yes, after that, an hour? that's one hour, everyone. Where's our parents? <laughs> yeah. Well, huh. well, you know what? These this <laughs> army of children, they've they've really it's part of the reason why I decided to move out here and live on my own is because they're just they're just taking over this town. And I, I don't know who's behind it, but I know that something terrible is happening. Cat and olive. See, I want my no. husband back because he knew the difference between a cat and an olive and whether or not he's wearing a skirt. He's a brilliant, brilliant man and a great dancer. 
What did? All right. What did he? What ballerina. Did he, he was a ballerina with the Russian ballet. Uh, do you mean a oh my a ballerino? He was a ballerino. <laughs> Babe, I just got a job with the ballet. You're I'm going to be the very first ballerina. <laughs> not a ballerina. Oh no, not a ballerino. No, 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 okay, no. Okay, very interesting. Well, in Russia, everything's a little different. Yeah, well, I guess that's <laughs> Russia for you. Say, do we have any more of that pot roast? Uh, yes, we do, darling. Mm. Although I don't want to be rude, but should you be eating pot roast now, you're gonna have of course to. Of course I should. Plus, down. some little child outside wants the bone out of it. I told him oh, certainly. Sure. There you are, darling. <laughs> Please. Ah, oh, to be a ballerina. Ballerina. <laughs> So these kids, I I don't know why I assumed this. I thought they were hitting people with human bones. Is that weird that I thought that? Yes. Well, it is very, <laughs> very macabre. Darling, where did you get this pot roast? Um. This doesn't taste like beef nor pork. It was a store. Yeah, it's a local book. Have you been shopping at the human meat store again? Sweetie, you don't make a lot of money, and you, we've been waiting for you to get this. Welcome back. Would you like some... Lamb chops or or, or, or or burgers that are ha- hamburgers. No, you know what I want. You know why I came <laughs> you here. You want a quote pot roast unquote? I want a quote unquote pot roast. Okay, you I gotta know f- we got the best deals, and you know why I'm not saying it out loud. Because you don't want to talk about the trading of human. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And people have cameras at the telephones. Look, I don't want this getting back to me. I just know my husband is waiting to hear about a job. We don't have a lot of money, and we just we we're hungry. It we want tastes a roast. like a real roast. Hey, Mama, someone's moving in the meat locker. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll take that one. Yeah, let's get something fresh for this lady. She's a good customer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Pardon me, do you have any spare bones? Oh, you're that British guy. Am I? No bones if you don't buy the meat. That's my policy. It's on the side. Will that always be your policy? As long as there's a business. Do you consider yourself to be someone with a very soft skull? You're going to buy some hot dogs. (laughs) (laughs) Two hot dogs, please. Ballerino. Wow. No, I think he said he is the first male ballerina. He's very good. Oh, I that's incredible. Yeah, he's I'm the only person in his field that's thinking. amazing. Katalev. Katalev. Oh, it's getting oh, worse. No. Look, we, like, we have to do something. Yes, let's all we water the something. milk in the sit sit sit. Oh, sit. Dear. This oh is how no. Mm. They just degenerate from everything is a noodle until it's like the blending of words like and it's a mess. Did you say Benefer? Yeah, that was the, that was the result. The Benefer phenomenon was the result of a bone attack. Look, I have a theory, okay? And I'm starting to get out of the mood to talk to people. Oh, oh no, shit. no, please, we gotta get this theory then. <laughs> no, please, give us a theory. No, no, give us a theory. <laughs> There's a chimney sweep. His name is Herman, and he lives somewhere in the woods too. And we think he's been rounding up the children. And by we, I mean me and my cat. <laughs> what? How did that cat get in there? We will find out when Spontaneous Nation concludes. Have you or someone you love been injured in an automobile accident? Did you suspect that the automobile was haunted? That's what I think. Call me. Let's talk about that ghost car. Do you think it's a ghost driving a car? Or do you think it's the ghost of a car that used to be a car but then broke down And then the owner had it take it to the scrap heap, and it got compressed into a cube. And this is the ghost of the car. In any event, my phone number goes 123-456-7. That's 123-456-7. Call me now. I forgot the area code. Zero. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope. Zero is the country code. I'm sorry. I belong to a country that is designated the zero country. If you've never heard of us, why don't you get your pickaxe out and start journeying to the center of the earth? Thank you, Jules Verne. And, and now, now back, back to, to the, the show. show. <laughs> Bubble. Bubble vacation. Are, are you talking to me, Marianne? <laughs> Uh, 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 spaghetti shed. Relentless spaghetti flapjack. Sh- Relentless flapjack. Flapjack. Oh. Relentless. Oh, Relentless. Like. Yeah. Katalev. I can't understand. She's completely <laughs> gone. I had to do this. Do you need a blanket? I have blankets. That wouldn't hurt. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, little Jenna. Oh, come here, my little Jenna. That's your cat, Jenna. Yes. <sighs> oh. 
Get we the lost. Fuck out of here! <laughs> oh, she's gone. She's retreated back. She's reverted back to a hermit. <sighs> How did you get in my home? Oh, we're sorry. Um. Oh. I don't even know how to recap this. My husband was hit by a bone by a small kid who was later incarcerated. <gasps> and um, this doctor was also hit by a bone by a child who yes, my wife was hit by bone. bones. Bones? Um, we all just met. Everyone just met? And we heard there was a theory that you theory. gave us that uh, there's some uh, chimney sweep who has sweep. a gang of children that are going around gang? and hitting people <laughs> with bones. Bones? And then you mentioned your cat in mentioned. there. Mentioned. Jenna. Yeah. Jenna, what a lovely name. I don't think lunch time for the dinner time is over, honey. Right, I'm... lunch is over, everyone. Let's get back to the matter at hand. You're going to take the human bones, nice. you're going to toink people on the end, and then you're going to bring their trinkets and... <gasps> Treasure! Treasure! And you're going to bring them back... <laughs> to... Hoyman! Hey, wait, wait, these bones are human? <laughs> That's weird. I thought they were from chickens and cows and... Was that weird that I thought that? How You thought... <laughs> You thought one of the bones was from a chicken? I thought all these bones were from like chickens and dogs and cats. Do you know how big chickens are? They're big. What? I saw a chicken once as big as a Christmas tree. She probably doesn't know what chicken is, honey. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. <laughs> that is a big chicken. That chicken! Now, darling, I know you're you're very scared by this big oh. chicken, but promise me it won't make you run away from home. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Oh, wait, she's gone! Then we get to go back to see our parents? Well, I mean, you, uh, you're free to go if you wish, but I, I thought we'd become a little family. Are you crying, Armin? Yes, I am. I'm crying a lot. Armin, do you live alone when you don't have a bunch of kids that work for you? It's just me. Is it's that why you're taking us from our family? Because we could probably come over here after school or whatnot. It's not the same, though. If you're gone, it's just me and my cat, Ben. ben? You know who else has the cat? That weird lady that we tried to hit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that weird lady yeah, we yeah. tried to hit. <laughs> we tried to hit. Yeah, you know that lady who lives over there? We tried to hit. <laughs> <laughs> See how much of a family we've become? Everyone's got the same curious Yeah, yeah other, other families will finish each other's sentences. That's right. We make a purpose and not That's finish them. Right. Sen- why finish them? <laughs> yeah, why finish them? Yeah, why? Finish him. Well, we should go back there. I bet she's I bet she's more vulnerable than the last time we tried to attack her. Can we bring Ben? Especially no. now we know to bring treasures back to you, Armin. Mean. Right, now trinkets. we're all on the same page. Treasures and trinkets. Let's all let's pack it all up. We'll bring Ben and we'll go over to the uh, the hermit's house. We'll toink her on the head and anyone else who's around will take their treasures and trinkets and trinkets. bring them back here. Should we on mass say the family cheer before we go? Of course we should. <sighs> Let's get it! This is how cavemen used to get their wife. Uh, yeah! Yeah, they used to get their wife by cheering real loud. Kalifrat. Kalifrat Rashmak. Now it's not even words. It's just noises. Like touring Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe a year ago at this time. What? He was touring Eastern Europe a year ago. This oh, time. no, it's, it's happening to her, too. <laughs> oh, dear. Did you get tonked in the head? Well, Systematic yes. velour? Why did I, you not tell us? Well, because it's it's like a zombie attack. You don't want everyone to know, and you think you're stronger than in, like... Fresh I galata was, ramp, I am. sound like this. I'm, I'm all he has to keep him from cackling. Well, not anymore. I mean, you're obviously uh, succumbing to the effects of the toinking. We need to find these kids and incarcerate or kill them. Listen, uh, I'm sorry, what's your name, Hermit Lady? Boingo. <laughs> Listen, Boingo, we're the last two people who haven't been toinked by a bone. And yes. I know that you are, you only have so long before you revert to your hermit ways. Yes. And, you, and so I, I really need you to like focus up and, and help me out here because we have I'm to. I'm focused. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't mean to. <laughs> hey, guys, I can see the cabin up ahead. Let's run um, to it! That's right. Come on! They got toys and twinkets in there! Boingo, Boink. Boingo Boink. do you hear the, the voices? Toink. Wait a minute. Shh. Shrink it. Shh. Shrink. Everyone needs to be quiet. Let me listen. Shh. Hey guys, this Shrink. might be a good time Shrink. for us to start Shrink. whispering Shrink. instead of talking out loud to each other. Yes. you hear that? Yes, they're just about to start whispering. And I hear another cat. I can't be Jenna because Jenna's here under my arm. 
<sighs> we have to do something. What's your name, sir? My name is Larry. Doctor Larry. La- doctor Larry. Oh, no, doctor. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad you wore a tie. Well, now I'm... <laughs> I just got to hurry up and drive up to that family. I see that they threw out their GPS somewhere around this area. They need to know there's danger afoot. There's danger afoot. We'll drive. All right, so we'll just uh, barricade ourselves yes, in this Yes, we barricade, room. and then uh, my windows are already blacked out because I don't like sunlight. I, yes, and, of uh, Okay, so uh, we each get to one of the windows. Right. Someone climbs down the chimney. That's right. Someone knocks on the door. Yeah. And then we all... Toink, try to push them all open, and then we get in. And again, get the trinkets. And we toink them silly, and we run away. No, no, we toink them. We toink trinkets, them. Then man, you then toink one. everyone you see. Yeah. If if you need to, yeah. push them through a window. Yeah. If a window's low enough to the ground. Are you yeah. still crying? I'm still crying. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But now I'm crying because I'm, ha- become, I'm happy we're doing this together. Aren't you, hey, aren't you a chimney sweep? You should be the one goes down the chimney. That's right. Hey, Jane. Oh, it's been so long. I haven't gone down it. A- That's right, Ben. Remember? We used to go down chimneys all the time. What do you mean? We never heard it. <laughs> there seems to be something stuck in there, but we haven't lit a fire in a year. It's probably soot. Oh, thank God you're here, and thank God we'll always have you in our country, the greatest country on earth. That's right, me and Ben will pop down the chimney, see what's going on down oh, there. Oh, sweet than a cat. And then... <laughs> Darling, as you pop down the chimney, yeah? Not yet, would you like to take a photo? I'd like to, is yeah. it possible? Yeah. Very nice, then. All right, I'm, uh, I'm in the chimney. Well, he's in the chimney, I can't get a photo. Yeah. What's that, Ben? Ben's swatting at something. What's he swatting at? What is it? It's a human bone. You've got a human bone lodged in your chimney. Darling, I think it's a good time for us to move. Let's do pack our bags. So long. Thanks a bunch. (laughs) And I chased them to America, hoping to find them and bring them to justice. You see, the only reason I formed this gang of children (laughs) that I lured away from their families (laughs) and taught taught to hit people on there with human bones was that I could eventually find that couple and bring them to justice. Makes so much sense. And the trinkets and treasures were just to like, that's to, just to keep the roof over over our heads oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, expenses and things like that. That's and noble. Apartment is Thank really you. nice. Thank you. Yeah, it's really lovely Thank with all you. those watches and those bell jars and those... Bell, so many bell jars. So many bell jars. But I never knew how... So wait a minute. Interesting they could be. I have a question. What is it? So... Now, you want to bring this couple to justice because they had a human bone in their chimney. Right. But you frequent a human meat wait, market. Wait a minute, did she say <laughs> a, a human yeah, bone? Yeah, to indicate. A human bone. It's like an emphasis thing. I never got it's used okay. to that. Like, it was ought 08 or ought 8. It mm. just didn't flow off the tongue. Yeah. So, a, a human a, bone. A, 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 I'm almost there. I can see that cabin around the corner. Lord help me. If these people are in the danger I think they're in, Lord help me. Eh, hey, I get it now. Eh. Eh. Right. Okay, so who gets it? Butchie gets I it? I get it. I have one question. Though. Yes, Pipsqueak. You found one human bone in their uh, their chimney. But right. They called you to excavate this chimney. Like, maybe they thought it was like a dead rat or some leaves. And then you find a bone and they get scared and they run away. Do you really think it was definitely their bone? They killed someone and put well, a bone what, in there. Now, them. why would they leave? Doesn't that imply a certain amount of maybe guilt? Maybe they were superstitious. Once again, I want to point out that you shop at a human meat market. Scraps. The whole point I go there is that it's a, it's the, the the best source of human bones. I'm I'm trying to uh, I, I, eventually they'll show up there, don't you see? Alive both though. But there's no need for the human bones to go to waste. Uh, why should those people have died in vain? But they're being killed. Well, I'm not killing. <laughs> Scabalat framing that. Yeah. See. Boldu metal to go. Boingo. Yes. Boingo. It's oh. Boingo. Oh, oh yes. Oh. oh. Boingo. Boingo. Oh my God! Bo- I haven't heard my name called by so many Bo- Bo- people since Bo- 1971. Boingo. Bo- 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 Boingo. Hi, Boingo. Hi, Boingo. Boingo over here. Boingo. Boingo. Boingo over here. Boingo. Who are you wearing? Hey guys. Oh, I'm wearing Yves Saint Laurent. Boingo, I'm pregnant with your baby. Okay. Hey Boingo, I lost my calendar. What year is it? 1971, baby. Boingo, I want to sell you a shack. Wait a minute. Where? 
It's in the middle of nowhere. I will take it. Just outside of town. I'll go. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, oh, I was having a memory. Okay, Jenna. Jenna's purring is alerting me to the fact that they, they're they starting to begin their raid of my shack. All right, guys, let's do it. On count of three, let's raid. One, two. Larry, get ready. <laughs> yeah, Amy. Let me get into the chimney. I'm sorry. Oh, all right. He's coming down the chimney, Larry. Who's Quick. All right, Boingo. Um, uh, I guess light a fire. Okay. Boingo. Oh, gosh. Oh, shoot. Oh, gosh. Oh, shoot. Oh, gosh. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> You're having a long, hard time for a hermit. Whoa, oh, someone's, someone's at the, at the door. door. Hold this on. This is strange. Hello? Oh, hey, you open it. Hey, hey doink. Oh, oh, oh. And, oh. and oh, on no. top of that, hey, oh, doink. Oh. Doink. Oh, wait, we got to get trinkets, too. Let's see what they have. Hmm. Did you doink them? Yeah, We're working oh. on it. <laughs> All right, Come children. Come down the chimney. Children, stop what you're doing right now. <gasps> Who's oh. that? Who's Who that? are you? Look at my well-dressed garb. Who is that? Oh, do you sell drive? the Land Rovers? Do I, I do sell Land Rovers. Oh. I track these people here by their GPS. And all of you are going to jail. <laughs> no! no. Herman not, said we wouldn't. Herman? Where is Herman? He's oh, in the chimney. chimney. He's in the chimney. He he Herman, do yeah. you recognize me from this voice? Uh, you you sound very well dressed. Now do you recognize me from this voice, Herman? Oh, oh my God! Oh, I do. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and me wife. Hello, darling. It's the two of you. What? You were dressed as a kid this whole time. <laughs> That's right. A bit short for oh an adult. My God. What? You were wow. right of a nose. <gasps> Undercover adult. I've been working at the Land Rover store while she's been dressed as a child this whole time. I went to the bathroom in front of you. Yeah, I went to the bathroom in front of you. <laughs> I looked the other way. I'm not a pervert. Yeah, I Herman. Weird. Who believes you? Herman, still in the chimney, I see. Yes, I am. But I'm going to bring you to justice. Not Some, before. Somehow. Not before we can nail the top of the chimney and get this fire going good. We're going to bring you to dinner when we cook you. So, <laughs> well, just, just to be clear, you're going to seal the top of the chimney. Yes. That's right. You're going to, you're going to light a fire. Yes. And so you're going to, you're going to burn me alive and smoke me at the same time. That's the plan. What, you think these kids will save you? Well, Ben's up in the chimney, and he's a cat, and he doesn't really have, like, the same free will. Ben, like, we should let Ben, him that's go. right. You can scramble down there. Ben. Uh, ben, go, go down. I think there's another cat. You two can band together and become a super team. We won't kill an animal. Cat, there's no olive, way. Olive, cat, cat, <gasps> olive. My husband, he's... Oh. Oh, 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 darling, there's a cat! There's Get a cat coming towards me! We can't! Look out! Oh, my God, it's a cat! They have to go to the band! You're going to get stitches! I don't even want to go with me! Wait a minute! Oh, my God, the cat is walking all over the x-ray machine! Oh, wow. sweetie! Boink, 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 boink! Oh, oh, oh. Sweetie, sweetie! Cat, scan, Olive. Scan, cat, that, scan, scan. Olive's a nut. Cat, what have, scan, I, what have scan, I been saying? Darling, scan. Oh, what happened? I got twinked on the head. Oh, oh the, yeah. voice the, the, the voice command of the x-ray machine seems to be working. It's scanning. Oh. Wow, my husband is back. I, I'm back. I can feel my hands. I'm fully back. What? It's the radiation from the x-ray machine. This Excalibur 2000 is one great... Not cat. It was worth the eighty-nine thousand dollars my husband. Worth spent. every penny. Now wait a minute. Who are these two strangers in my home, and why are their children here too? Boingo, Boingo. Uh, the most amazing thing has happened. Uh, the the your cat Jenna and and this other guy's cat Ben. They sort of banded together. Uh, oh, they no. worked the X-ray machine. Jenna's not spayed. <laughs> Oh, looks like there's a They little... band it together? Ben they fucked! I, I didn't mean it that way, but I, I think they may have, actually, in the excitement. No! Why wouldn't you spay your cat? You should spay and neuter your cat. You should spay. Don't you have the prices right? Boingo, boingo, boingo. Boingo, boingo, boingo. Why would you spay your cat? Why would you spay your cat? What? Boingo, why won't you spay your cat? I don't understand. Why would you spay your cat? It's like, Anyway, it's reckless. <laughs> yes, like 144 cats can come from like one cat.
that, but whatever, it's fine. But look, I, I, I mean, we shouldn't quibble because yes. those cats, they're in love and they saved our lives. I don't know what has happened. I've been in a fog this entire time. We'll explain it to you at some point. Oh, good, point. good. Thank you. Me I just, too, but I'm just so glad to wake up in a celebrity shack. And well, these <laughs> dead English people on the floor, I can tell they're English by their fancy dress. Yeah, they were torn apart by two house cats. Maybe we can donate them to the meat market. Oh, yeah. I mean, we might as well, right? Why not? I mean, it's almost like glaringly obvious. Oh, but what about these kids? What do we do with these children? Hey, My wife and I are barren. We both are. Oh. <laughs> You're both barren. We, I yeah. try. I I'm already a have a family. I'm I can't. I have do parents. Have yeah, 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 do you have parents a family too? too? Yeah, I do. But, parents. you know, I haven't seen them while. They haven't come looking. I got parents, but my parents said if I ever find any better than they are, I can go live with them. Oh, well, I mean, we could put it to a vote. What, how many kids want to stay with their actual parents? Oh. And how many kids want to stay with this couple? I don't stay with this couple. Well, there it is. Funny. I, well, Marianne, I guess our job is done here. Larry, I guess we should get back to that mountain. Have we really just been avoiding it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but it's one of those things we don't agree on, That's I think. true, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> we do have a lot of disagreements. Herman, oh. we're going to miss you now that we're going to go stay with the Baron parents. Well, I guess I'll just uh, live out the rest of my life in this chimney. We'll write to you from Russia. I'll take care of you. <gasps> what? Oh. Is that Boingo? Yes, it's me, Boingo. Boingo. <laughs> I've long admired you from afar. Oh, my goodness. I feel like it's meant to be because I don't know how to light a fire. And, well, you're stuck in that chimney. And <laughs> so we can live our days happily together here in this cabin. And I don't have to see you if I don't want to. So are you just going to leave me in the chimney? Yes. <laughs> right, well. Never date a hermit. <laughs> and it all happened in a place called Land Rover. Mary Holland, if people wish to find you online, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at mholland85 and on Instagram at maryhollandays, like the sauce. Right. And do you have anything you would like to promote? Oh, sure. <laughs> You could check out the Wild Horses podcast on Howl. Yes, which I absolutely, I'm a huge fan. I love it. Thank you. Please do check that out. Yes, please check that out. And uh, Blunt Talk is going to be out on iTunes. So if you don't have a Stars subscription, you can watch it rented from iTunes. And the theme is sung by Dolly Parton, right? The theme. Blunt Talk, Blunt Talk. Oh, <laughs> oh I wish. Oh. <laughs> You met Dolly Parton once. I did. Oh, that, was, that is a amazing. wonderful picture. Oh. You look so thrilled. I can't you believe it. You look so it. emotional. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> standing next to me it was amazing. But do check out uh, the Wild Horses Perspective podcast yes. on Hal and uh, Blunt Talk. Wonderful. Jean Villapeak, where are you? Where are you going to be? I'm going to be here. I'm going to be uh, Villapeak on Twitter and um, Instagram and uh, doing shows at IO West uh, Quartet Thursday nights with Craig Kikowski mm -hmm. uh, and other f wonderful folks and at uh, uh, UCB Franklin Friday nights 930 soundtrack so bring your music and then we'll improvise come on guys it's a reasonable request <laughs> Sarah Burns yes hi Oh, you can find me on Instagram at Sarah Burns Me. <laughs> on Instagram. And I'm also doing Twitter now. It's fantastic. No way. I'm not doing it well. But you're on there now. But I'm trying to upload an image here and there <laughs> to voice an opinion. <laughs> trying. Or trying add a little bon mot to the world. <laughs> at Sarah Burns IE. Sarah Burns E. Um, it'll blow your mind out. <laughs> and uh, you know what? This, this airs in, this is April. Uh, I'm going to say that is probably correct. Yes. Jeez. I don't it know. is. I don't know what to tell you to look for. Let me tell you. Well, because it's too far in advance. And in the new year, <laughs> we're going to do things differently. But April 11th is when this is dropping. Well, I'll be doing my taxes. <laughs> and I'll As be we all should be. dropping some comedic Twitters and tweets and whatnot. Bomo. Photographs of my. <laughs> Get ready. What do you take photographs of? Uh, my tax forms. <laughs> Don't do that. No. Just to shut it down. That's your, don't don't <laughs> know so your information out there. Social security number, which I can give right now if you'd like. Go ahead. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I called your bluff. <laughs> yes, you did. Gary Anthony Williams. The tallest man in town. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Gary, at Gary A. Williams on the Twitters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see me on the, the bunch of New Who's line, is it anyways? New Who's. If you want to see me live, come to Largo for the black version. Yes. Excellent show at the, an excellent place. It's the Negroist improv <laughs> in town. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it. In a, as far as April goes, I think it's great. Mm-hmm. I think it's a it's a good it's, amount. It's a good start. Eben Schleder, Eben Schleben on tw- Eben Schleben. <laughs> He's not Eben Schleben on Twitter. Eben Schleben. That's somebody else. Oh, I hope somebody gets that uh, that name. Please, somebody claim Eben Schleben. <laughs> Eben Schleder on Twitter. Ebenschleder.com. Seek out Eben's work. Buy it. Download it. Whatever you need to do, because Eben Schleder is only the best. I would like you to encur- I would like to I would like you to encourage me to encourage you <laughs> to watch No You Shut Up on the Fusion Network. If you don't have Fusion, you can see it on fusion.net, Hulu, uh, YouTube, Apple TV. There's a lot of ways you can see it if you want to see it, but you got to want to see it. <laughs> Spontaneity Nation Live happens the first Saturday of every month at Largo at the Coronet. These live shows are always a lot of fun. Why don't you come out and see one and stop being such a baby to yourself? Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the show. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti. Hey, quick, don't turn the podcast off. I know you probably left it on by accident, but I'm Arnie Niekamp from Hello from the Magic Tavern. This is what's going on. About a year ago, I fell through a dimensional portal behind a Burger King into the fantastical land of Foon. I'm joined by my co-host, a talking badger. Mmm, chunt, please. And a magical wizard. I am Usador, blue wizard of the 12th realm of Ephesius. His name goes on a lot longer than that, but oh, we don't have so time for names. it. We interview adventurers, magical creatures, talking animals, and we talk about buttholes a lot. I apologize <laughs> for that. If that sounds interesting, download Hello from the Magic Tavern. Aye, uh, and then you can join me in my quest to defeat the Dark Lord. Correct, Arnold? Correct. Download it on Earwolf, and the entire back catalog is also on the Howl app. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ockerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. 